gates are generally considered to be fairly boring and utilitarian, but they are a really important part of most production situations. Often they're just thought of as the thing that you use to fix a problem, such as, you know, a bit of noise, etc. But they can be pretty creative. I often find myself using one to tailor the, the release of a sound. So if you've got a long snare drum, etc., that kind of thing, you can just tighten it up and make it sound the way you would have liked had you had full control over the sound. But that's not always the case. However, a full band gate doesn't always do everything you want. Multiband gates generally tend to be uh, a paid plugin, but at the moment, certainly at the time of recording this anyway, there is a freely available one, although it is going to be paid at some point, although I think the price will be $10, so it's not going to be you know, crazy expensive anyway. But that's uh, Mogwai Audio's M-Gate Multi, and that's what we're looking at today. So let's get straight into it. So here we are in Cubase, and I've got a fairly simple setup. I've got a couple of loops here, which we're just going to listen to and try and do some work with. Both of them are from the Loop Masters Welcome sample pack, so hopefully I won't get shot for using them. And also they're freely available, so it's uh, one of those very long um, large downloads that they give you when you sign up even just for a test so let's just have a listen to this loop first so this is the first one I, I quite like the sound of it but I don't like the ambience now a typical approach to this would be to put a gate on so here's just the standard Steinberg gate it's currently on the default settings and if we put it on you can hear that it's cutting out some of that ambience. So if I play that beginning again with... So after that third hit that we hear, you can hear that working. Now, clearly this would need some fine tuning. So you typically alter the, the threshold. So it's only being triggered at the things that we want it to be triggered on and then alter the release time to control just how much ambience we get. So if this is too high, let's say this is turned up here, then even though the gate is on, it's never really shutting. So you can see that it's starting to shut. You see it go yellow as it starts to shut, but it never fully shuts. So you'd juggle these together, play around with them, etc. Now, yeah, it is a gate with a side chain on. We're not going to get into those particular weeds at the moment. So it is possible to make it listen to different frequencies, but it doesn't make it affect different frequencies. When it shuts, it closes everything out. And that's less than desirable because often this kind of ambience is in a particular frequency range. So what I don't like about this loop here is, is mostly the reverb off of this snare hit that you can see here. So it would be nice to be able to just reduce that and leave the rest of it untouched. And that's exactly where a multiband gate comes in. So Here we have the M-Gate Multi. So it actually works in a pretty straightforward way. So it's divided the audio up into, in this case, six bands. Now we have a few presets here, so you can have it in single band if you want, three or six bands. And then we can, look, so let's just stick with that. And then we can listen to each band individually. Here it's effects, etc. And if we just take it off being bypassed, We can hear we're getting quite a different sound and it works much more naturally. So this is just a case of going through these different bands here, tweaking them in terms of the frequencies, etc. but then listening to each band and deciding how much effectively release time you want on each one. So in this case here, I've made the threshold reasonably high. So let's listen to this because... I have a feeling it's going to be between this band and this band is where the things that I don't like about this loop are. So if we solo this and bypass it, we will hear just those frequencies. And we can hear that ringing on. So if I take it off a bypass, you can hear that's much tighter. So even though it's got a long release on it, you can bring that down. because the threshold is quite high relative to the amount of signal that's here, because you can hear it's pretty quiet, that means that this is cutting off reasonably well. Now, another nice part of this is its variable ratio. So if we have a one-to-one -one ratio, it's not doing anything, but you can make 
adjustments to how severe it is by turning this up. So it normally, I think the bands start out at 10, so it's 10 to 1, which is pretty severe. But I found that just adjusting this to turn this down, so it's it's only reducing it rather than totally shutting the gate, as it were. And it, it's it's working really nicely on that. And let's just... Again, we've got that bypassed and that band. Again, we can tighten this up, maybe just turn the ratio up a bit. So it's just clamping down on a bit more. So even if we had all these other bands bypassed, in fact, I'm going to bypass all of these and just leave those two bands. So with just these two bands working and the rest of it passing unaltered, you can hear how it's now altering that reverb. Quite nicely. Now, obviously, you'd want to fine tune that to your, your taste, etc. You've got the ability to alter the gain of each band as well. So if you decide you want to accentuate a particular band, so let's say we wanted more of the top end, we could maybe put the threshold all the way down. So it's not now affecting that at all. And then we can... But maybe you then want to bring that in. A couple of nice touches as well. You can see the input signal. So here we can see the input frequencies and we can see the output. So you can see the gates effect. So for instance, if we turn the threshold all the way up on this top band, we can see that's not happening. You can see the crossover frequency as well. So it's not just like it stops dead at this frequency. That's not the way this works. But we can see all that top end is now being taken out. And then it's starting to creep through, etc. So that's a quick look at the M-Gate Multi and how it works in one situation to remove reverb. But the, the go-to use I find for this kind of plugin is to get rid of unwanted resonances in drums. Whenever I'm recording drums, I try to get them pretty much as dead as I can. Not Alex Van Halen, just thud dead, but I don't like ringing drums. So often I come across drum loops where I really like the loop, you like the feel and everything about it, other than the fact you've got this kind of boingy clown car drum sound. So this next example is just looking at how you would approach that. It's pretty much the same thing. Obviously, you adjust the dials to suit for your particular taste. You might like things ringing on. I don't. We live in a world of differences. Let's celebrate that. Anyway, let's have a look at the plugin. So here is a second example, and it's just got a resonance in the snare sample, which which I don't I don't like, and I want to calm that down a bit. I don't want to totally get rid of it, but I don't want it as long and as dominant as it is. So here's the sample without any processing applied. we can hear the whole thing sounds really ringy and it's say it's not a sound that I like but you might like it so you'd probably want to switch off at this point so in this case what I've actually done is made it into a five band so I've taken what was six bands so in fact let's just load up a six band here and if we want to get rid of this band we can just literally press delete there we can alter the frequency boundary by grabbing the vertical line or these which moves it slightly strangely which is a little bit weird and then choose these and tune them so to tune these let's say we want to tune this to so let's just turn the threshold all the way down so that's getting that one of those resonances which i really don't like kind of the the ringing of that ride ride bell kind of happening there so that's what i want to calm down it's got all the crunch in there so now again, we can just tweak these and you can see these as initially on these default settings. Often I find I need a longer release than I, I would think normally, but also turning the ratio down gives us a smoother progression into that gating rather than it being a really hard gate. If we were up here, we get that. And the release time doesn't seem to work in the way you might expect. So... It takes a bit of fine tuning and the same would go for this band here. So, so we've got that there. And again, let's turn that down. You can see we've got a lot of that kind of ringing on the, the 
under frequency of the ride bell ringing away. So we can just bring that under some control. Now it does get a bit glitchy listening to this, although that might be the kind of sound that you're after. But again, with a bit of tweaking, let's just make that a little bit longer, make that a little bit more severe. And now, so we can hear we've taken some of that out. So with it in, we've got that. Probably need a bit at the top end as well, so maybe we'll just bring that down. Similar kind of deal again. And these bottom bands. So it's easy to tell whether you've done anything to it by just pressing bypass. And there we can hear that ringing on, but I don't really like the bottom end ringing on on that as well. It sounds a bit tighter, although again, we're getting that clicking in the processing, which is hopefully something that will get maybe addressed in this at some point. But just bring that. So now we've got somewhere with reducing those resonances. Sometimes it can just take things a little bit too far and make it sound a little bit uh, weird and dry. It sounds a bit like some of the tracks on Introducing by DJ Shadow. So it's like those choppy uh, sample edits, which isn't always what you want. But a way to smooth that out is just to put a bit of reverb on there. Now, I know I've taken sort of reverberance off there, so now I'm putting it back on. But in this case, you can fine tune it. Obviously, with the plug-in, you can tune it in terms of its frequency response, its level and timing, etc. So it's it's not like you're putting the same thing back on. So in this case, I've just done the uh, the holy grail of things that you shouldn't do and just put a reverence in the channel. And when we turn it on, we'll see that just smooths this out a bit. Now, typically, you would be doing this with a kind of ambience reverb that you'd have on other tracks within the track. And often you find that in context, if this is playing along with other things, it's not a problem anyway. So just experiment and see how you get on. But here's how it sounds after I've applied that. So here is Reverence in the LA Studio preset. The only thing that I've changed because it's an insert is I've just put the mix down to, let's start out about 14%. And typically you would have this as a send and you wouldn't be doing it like this, but I didn't want to complicate matters by having a send that you can't see where it's rooted, etc. So now playing this can see and hear that that reverb's working, whereas if we take it out, it just sounds a little bit more glitchy. So it just smooths over those gaps in the sample and makes your edit sound, sound much better. Now, obviously, you probably wouldn't have just a, a multi-gated drum loop in the context of a song. It would have other things happening, but... Sometimes when things like this are exposed on their own, they need just a little bit of a helping hand to make them sound more consistent. However, you may like the sound of it with those little gaps in there. Horses for courses. So there you have it, a look at multiband gating in general, but specifically the Mogwai Audio M-Gate Multi, which is at the time of recording available for free from their website, which I've linked in the description. Multiband gating is a useful tool, as we've seen, for manipulating sample loops and also individual samples because you can, as we've seen, control different frequencies, responses over time and get hold of things such as ringing, etc., and control them in a way which is much more fine-tuned than if you're just using a full band gate, as is the typical one which is supplied with Cubase. As ever, I hope you found this video useful, and if you have, please like and subscribe. And we'll see you again soon for more Music Tech Tuition.